Hey guys, my name is Eric. I'm going to walk you through how to build an incubator uh, real cheap, real fast, real easy. Uh, under $25 and under 5 minutes you can have an incubator and be ready to go. Um, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a roll of tape. You're going to need a thermostat and you're going to need a humidity gauge. Um, I like to use ZooMed stuff. Uh, they're really accurate and everything, so that's what I like to use the for all my things. Um, you're also going to need a heat pad. Uh, again, this is a Zoom Ed. This is a 4 watt one. This is going to serve my purposes right now. So um, you can use bare ones, small ones. It all depends on how much heat you need, and that depends on what your what eggs you have in the incubator and how warm the room is around the incubator. Um, the last thing you're going to need is something to serve as the incubator unit. Uh, I like to use styrofoam coolers. You can go to a store and buy a styrofoam cooler, uh, any size you know you want for what your needs are. The bigger you, the cooler you get, the more eggs you can put in it, but you're also going to need a bigger heat pad and so on. Um, I like to use one that can fit two shoebox shoe size bins in. Uh, that's what I breed all my things in. Uh, my bearded dragons just have them in there. The leopard geckos I can put easily five or six clutches in one shoe box thing without crowding them and stuff. So uh, a good place to uh, find coolers is uh, grocery stores. They get fruit and stuff in them. Uh, you have to check, see how big they are and stuff like that. A lot of times they're pretty shallow, so it might not suit the purpose. Um, another great place is pet stores that carry fish because the fish have to be shipped in a cooler. And a lot of times the pet stores don't do anything with the cooler afterwards and they just throw it away. So you can go in and ask them, do you have any, you know, leftover coolers? And a lot of times they just give you one more, you know, may charge you a dollar or two or something like that. So uh, it's a quick and easy way to do it. Um, right here, this is a, a cooler I was talking about. It's, it can fit two shoebox size bins in very easily. Uh, so this is what you're going to need first. So basically just take the top off of the cooler, and I've already made a hole in mine uh, for this, this purpose. Um, you just punch a hole through, uh, try not to make it too big, just as big as you need it, um, just so you can fit the socket through here. Now you want to go on the inside first, and you want to just poke the socket through, pull it all the way through so you get the pad right up here. Now I made a little uh, wire holder right here just so I can turn this and put it right in here like that. Um, this is going to cut out the hole so that way you, you can just fill it on top and it will be perfect. Um, if you get a new one, a new heat pad, they'll stick really well so you just stick it right here. Um, if you need to do it, you just get some tape. Um, any tape will work. These things don't really get that hot so you don't have to worry about you know catching the house on fire and stuff. Just tear off a chunk get the heat pad, and then you just tape it right down to the thing right here. And this is going to stay right on there. Um, if you have any little gaps left over, like right right here, I don't know if you guys can see that out there or not, but there's a little hole right there. Um, it's not a big concern, um, but you can get go on the other side and you can fill it with uh, great stuff. It's like a foam material. Or you can just get some insulation or whatever, put it there and tape over it and that works fine too. Um, I've also previously done it so I have tape running around the uh, incubator at different points. Now I put the tape there um, only because I make holes. Uh, I use a screwdriver, I just make holes you know, around the side in a uniform pattern and then I put the, the heat pad on with the temperature gauge and the humidity gauge and stuff and then I see what the temperatures are going to be like inside and uh, depending on how hot, how uh, humid and stuff is in there, I base that on what I'm going to do. So if the uh, holes seem to be holding the humidity in and everything, most of the time I put too many holes, just you can never have too many holes. So uh, if you have too many holes and the humidity is not staying in there at all, I just run some tape right around the sides. And that just holds the humidity right in there. Um, you can also, you know, if you find out it's too humid, you can always just poke right through the holes. 
you know, with the screwdriver or a pen or whatever, and the holes are already there, so you don't have to worry about, you know, disturbing the eggs or anything like that. Um, the water in here, uh, I like to keep about a good inch above the bottom uh, for my holes, and then I pour about three quarters of an inch to a half an inch of warm water. The warm water is important uh, because that's what's going to keep it more humid. Cold water doesn't keep it as humid. Warm water is, is always better. Um, so I put that in there, and then I get some extra reptile uh, food dishes that I'm not using, or uh, water dishes, or something to keep the containers out of the water. It doesn't have to, you know, be very big. It just has to be able to keep the containers out of the water. Or you can even build a little platform in here if you want. Uh, I just put down two dishes on each side, um, and then I just get my shoebox size bin, and I just put them right down in there, just like this. They fit right in, perfect. You have space on the side, so you you know you can lift them out easily and everything. So that's that's always great. Um, so right now you're pretty much three quarters of the way done. Uh, like I said, you just have to put in the thermostat and, and the uh, humidity gauge. Um, close it up with the water. You don't have to put your bins and stuff in here now because you always want to test first to uh, see what the temperature and humidity are. And I just put the cover on, like so, and then you just plug it into the wall socket and just sit and wait and see what the temperature is. And uh, I, I give it about an hour most of the time just to make sure that the uh, heat pad and everything is, is running and heating up. And from there you're going to have to decide, you know, is this hot enough for my purposes? Uh, you can try moving it around the rooms. Um, the heat pad is heated up about 10 to 15 degrees, depending on what size and how big the area is you're, you're using. And stuff. There's a lot of variables to it, but you can figure it out pretty easily. Um, so warmer areas are always going to be on like top of appliances, like refrigerators are really warm. Um, you can put them near your reptile lights and stuff like that, not underneath them, but near the tank and stuff, and that will heat it up too. Uh, most most uh, animals, so reptiles anyways, eggs like it between 80 and 88 degrees, depending, you know, most of them do though. So right here, uh, my room always stays about 85, so I don't really have to heat too much. Um, but upstairs, um, I also have incubators and stuff, and my room stays about 70 degrees. So that's why I use these. Um, you know, it raises it 10 to 15 degrees, so as long as it's 82, 83, um, in the incubator, the bearded dragon eggs hatch like nobody's business, and they're really easy to do. Um, the incubators. So I like these because they're flat. So you can stack multiple ones on top of each other. Always making sure you know you put your newest eggs on the bottom ones, so that way you know you can just take off an incubator as they hatch, and so on and so forth. Um, they're really cheap. Like I said, the heat pad is probably going to be tops twenty dollars. Um, the, the, the gauges and stuff, depending where you get them from. Sometimes Walmart even has the combo ones, uh, are like eight bucks. So right there, you're at, you're at like maybe twenty eight bucks, and the styrofoam pool should be free. Um, so right there, you have pretty much your incubator for twenty five, thirty dollars tops, and I believe it's under five minutes. So uh, it's gonna save you time, save you money, and hopefully you guys have some eggs that, you know, hatch out. This is also, you know, a good thing for chicken eggs and stuff too. The only thing with the chicken eggs is you're going to have to build a platform that allows the eggs to sit out of the water also. Um, and you're going to have to turn them. This doesn't come with, you know, an automatic turner, so you're going to have to turn them. So, hope you guys have fun building it. I hope you learned something and enjoy.